Do you think Christians are doing that, that we're waking up in the morning saying that we want to go out there and make a difference? No, I no? don't. Because, uh, well, I can't speak for all Christians, but I know like a lot of Christians that I encounter, especially the ones around my age group, I think they have the interpretation of Christianity totally mixed up because they, they from what they know, they basically judge everybody else based on their beliefs or how they feel. When I think that if you're a true Christian, you shouldn't uh, condemn someone else for the stuff that they do or uh, badge them or constantly remind them that they're sinners or they're going to hell or everything they do is a sin because the bottom line is nobody wakes up every day and live the perfect Christian life. What, what are your religious views, if you don't mind my asking? Well, I'm not denominational. I just believe in Jesus Christ, period. I, I don't, I'm not Catholic or Baptist. I just believe in the teachings of the Bible altogether. It's relationship with Him. I think for the college, or for the student who had a relationship with Christ, and they, they want to venture off, you know, and kind of explore, I think one of the biggest things that we can do is love them through that time and continue to show Christ's love to them. If you're just throwing scripture at them the entire time, they're going to run even further. You know, they grew up in this their entire life. They were taught this their entire life. If you just throw the word at them, they're going to keep going because they already know that. But I think if we stand with our arms open, continuing to love them and bring them back, you know, at any possible time and just allowing them to come back, not that we're encouraging them to go into the world, but keeping our arms open for them to come back, I think is one of the biggest things. And then for the students that are coming in that have never known Christ, Again, loving them with that same attitude, loving them the same as we would love those that are among us, it's opening the door for Christ's love into their life. So I think it all boils down to relationship, willing to share our lives with them, willing to love them like we love ourselves, and just showing Christ's love to them in general. Would you say you have like a, a church background? Did you grow up in church? Or well, kind of uh, sort of no? <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, I mean, I, I did go to church a lot when I was younger. Um, but I haven't so much in the past six years. And that's interesting because there's a, st a statistic that says that 70, I think like 75% of people that went to church up to the age of like, when they get 18, they just fall, go away. Well, you see, Why do you I, think that is? Well, I mean, I really couldn't tell you. I mean, I, I'm a police officer, so okay. I, I work all the time and I work on Sundays. Just so, being busy. Uh, yeah, well, and I've been doing this for five years. So, um, I think mainly because of me, it's not that I don't want to go to church. I guess I got tired of it. I got burned out because I went to private school whenever I was younger. Okay. Went to church every single day. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it was kind of you were too saturated with church. I you got I to a point so. where it's like, now, don't okay, get me wrong. There's, there's times that I'm, you know, sometimes I say, hey, you know, you need to go to church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, I don't know. So do you think church is uh, is relevant for the day? Like it's still important or it's kind of like you can kind of do your own thing at, at home or? Well, I do believe that uh, you don't have to go to church to be close to God. Okay, if you gave your son down for people that didn't want you and turned their back, like you let your son die for someone and they say, I don't want to accept him. I don't really care about what he did. He wouldn't be just as saying, you're not accepting my sacrifice, so I'm not accepting you into my kingdom. What if this person was a good person? No. That doesn't matter. If, that's why I draw the line. If I was See, a good, that's why I draw line. but if, if I was a good, a good, if I'm a good person and my and I sacrifice my son to someone else, and this person live a great life, a good life, help people, no sin, zero, no sin. I do mean zero. Mm -hmm. and I'm talking about the <laughs> you can ever find. This person, <laughs> zero sin, nicest person so, in the world. But this person was Buddhist. Uh -huh. He's going to hell. That is not cool. So, but you're saying though, if I turn my back on the sacrifice that you made, from, you wouldn't be disappointed. You wouldn't have a, a, a just would, cause to say, well, okay. I would be well, disappointed, but that's whenever you bring, but that's whenever, that's, 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 whenever, you, that's whenever you become big headed. This is my son. You don't accept him, you're going to hell. That but it's an act of love. Truth without mercy is dangerous, and mercy without truth is dangerous. We've had, in the last two school years, we've had at least five atheists get involved with our group. It seems like the most bizarre thing in the world to me that atheists want to be involved in Chi Alpha Christian Fellowship. We don't hide that. And yet they get involved, and the, the, the reason why, as I think comes out of the mouth of one of those uh, atheists, she attended one of our ladies' nights, my wife was hosting the ladies' night in the residence hall lobby. 
again, taking it to them, bringing, bringing the love of Christ to them right where they live. And uh, she opened it up for questions and answers. And this young lady, she raised her hand and she said, first thing out of her mouth, I am an atheist, but I am involved in a life group with Chi Alpha because I feel safe there, because they allow me to ask my questions. They love me and they don't condemn me. She said, I'm not a Christian yet, but she's on her journey. And then we, out of those five atheists, we've seen at least two of them give their life to Christ because students decided to come to them with that love and mercy and just love them for who they are right where they're at. Didn't get all freaked out about their questions. It, it's great, because Jesus said, if you don't ask, you don't receive. So they just had the conversation with them, loved them, and that, we constantly hear that from our, from the, our students to say, that have just recently gotten saved, whether it be atheist or some kind of a church background or whatever, they say, the one thing that makes the difference, for, that made the difference for me is the students here, they just love me. They accepted me for who I am, they, and they, they walked with me as I asked my questions about Jesus. We ended our journey by speaking with some of the students who are involved in reaching their peers on a day-to-day -day basis. They express joy about sharing their relationship with Christ with their peers and the rewards and importance of discipleship. I wasn't looking for God, I wasn't looking for Chi Alpha. I, I thought it was like a fraternity <laughs> when I first came. Um, but he, Tyron, he um, when he met me, and then from there, like, he just began to, I don't know, just be my friend regardless. You know, I would tell him, no, I'm not coming to that. I'm not coming to life group. I would walk out of life group. I'd walk out of TNL. And yet this dude would still show up at my dorm, sit on my floor, and just, just talk to me and hang out with me. And then it just continued through the course of the year until I eventually gave my life to Christ in November. But I remember thinking before, you know, throughout that whole four days uh, before leading up to that uh, November 20th, 2008, um, I could, one of, the, one of the pictures that is always that playing in my mind uh, was how he lived his life mm -hmm. and like I don't know if the, I, was, I just kind of sat there and I'm like God I don't I don't know how this all works but I see Tyron with this I see Tyron with joy I see Tyron I see I, I saw Jesus oh yeah like I'm, I'm very spiritual it's like you know when was the last time you read your Bible it's like oh I heard somebody talk about it on Sunday <laughs> like does that, does that count and so I was like, oh, okay. Um, but a lot of it is, you know, I do, I do the right things. I'm, I'm a good person. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I say that I'm this, but, you know, when you start you know, getting deeper, it's like, you know, do you have a relationship with Christ? And it's like, uh, I, I don't know. I, I go to church. Yeah. So. Some of the, uh, the very strange things about this campus is um, you can oftentimes meet a lot of people who, um, you know, who know a lot about the Bible, who, you know, are religious uh, in many aspects. But uh, when you go talk about our relationship with Christ, you know, it's um, it's like, wait, what? You know, like, it's kind of hard to to describe to someone who th who thinks that they, you know, have done everything right as a Christian. That you know, it's more about a relationship than like you know procedure. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's uh, it's interesting. But it also makes like this campus is um, uh, is a uh, is spiritual. You know, it's like you can um, it's not a taboo thing for to go talk to somebody about about God or about Jesus mm -hmm. because. Um, they're exposed to it a lot, you know, because of um, just the, the community this is and uh, the area we live in. So it's a it's it's an interesting place. It's we're placed in this role that we like. Hey, we have this job. We um, we lead um, life groups and Bible studies, and we have one on ones and everything. But at the same time, we're still doing what God wants us to do, um, just like He called us to do in the Bible and everything like that. But it's just the. Uh, having that satisfaction like hey I've been meeting with this guy for so long and hey he's building a relationship with Christ um, and God had used me to do that and it's just so often ha off awesome having um, that accomplishment and being able to be like hey um, God used me and I helped plant a seed in this guy's life or this girl's life and he's he or she is living for Christ so that's um, that's a great thing about being a student leader watching God take somebody that you never thought like and we get to those points where it's like man they're just not getting it it's just not it's not getting through 
but like knowing that God had that seed and God was watering that seed and nurturing that seed that whole time and watching them like slowly step by step grow yeah. like they start to realize things and they start to have these little revelations these little epiphanies mm -hmm. like even on one on ones where it's like oh like I've been hearing this in church all my life this is what this means mm -hmm. and this is real and, and they get it and in that point where they come up to you and they're like okay like I've been hearing I've been hearing everything you're saying and I want to be serious like this is it I want to be serious help me to take the steps to really live this out and to walk this out and it's like it's like they said it's like all those times where you thought man this this is not getting through what, what what's going wrong it's like it's all worth it to see them grow and to see them take that step and be like okay I'm serious I want to do this it's amazing this is my last semester I graduated um Every time I think about it, like, so in five weeks, school's over, and then it's, it's done for me. Um, but, and so discipleship, like, the more, the closer you get to our graduation and the, the more you mature, it's like the more God pushes his burden on you and just want to see your ministry thrive and grow after you're gone. Uh, I look at it, and it's like, this is where our ministry started in this little room here, you know, years ago, and it's like, over the years, our ministry's gone so much, and, and we don't have people that come out on a regular basis because we're, we're college. People are here for four to six years, and they graduate and move on, you know, and they go on. But discipleship is how we stay growing. You know, it's like it's being intentional by reaching out to their dorms because those are the most stable students. But discipleship is, is how it happens. Like these guys, these guys are leaders, you know, and they're sophomores. You know, I'm a senior. Seniors can't do it all because we're here and then we're going. And so it's like if we don't do our part to make sure that people are equipped, uh, not to just follow me because I'm going to be gone for a minute, but if they're equipped, to live a life for the Lord on their own, well then that's the goal, you know, it's like that's what Jesus did. It's like, hey, I have to leave, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm going, you know, but carry this on. The church was started from, from, from Jesus being here and then leaving and the disciples live and then they died and it's just been this continuous process that we've been a part of. And so that's just what they, 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 they let us know every, you know, continually all the time. And it's no longer even a burden. It's just like our eyes are just open to the fact that, man, I have to, I have to do something. I have to make these four to six years. They have to count, you know, it's like, and, and this is the way I make it count by living, you know, for the Lord, my classes, and then making sure that, that people are here to continually share the gospel, you know, so. The Secular University is one of the most interesting institutions in our country, and for Christian parents, it could be a scary place to think about sending your child. But we've seen in our look at the university that there are many who are giving their lives and their time to reach students for the cause of Christ. There are Christian communities on campus ready to assist in developing students in their relationship with God. We are encouraged that as long as the light of Christ shines through students and missionaries on campus, the state of the university will remain positive. To love you, you are my God, and I place no one above you. You showed me love even when I was a dog, too. That's why I don't understand when people can't love you. Why do I love you? Because even when I overlook you, you still have your eyes on me. You gave me ears to hear and eyes to see, and you always keep it real, you never lie to me. My divine protection from my rivalry. When I want to get closer to you, you draw nigh to me. And this is why I say. It's that place we have no business being at all. And he has to go get us from that place in our life too often. And he says, it's okay. You never really did love me like you should have, but it's okay because I love you.